In this video, I'm going to show you how, by 1500, to defeat Muscovy, set yourself up for easy expansion routes, and be the second ranked great power behind me. So if that's what you're looking for, keep watching. Firstly, you're going to want to set your rivals. These should include Muscovy and Tver. Then, focus on military points and get an advisor. The National Manpower Modifier 1 is advisable at this point, though for the first war against Muscovy, you're going to need a discipline or morale advisor, so these will also do. You're then going to want to build a spy network in Tver, and ally Scotland. Then, build to your force limit with infantry. After this, you should unpause. As soon as you're able to, ally the Great Horde. This might require you to improve relations with them. Then, when you have 20 spy network into there, fabricate a claim. Turn your ruler into a general and declare war on them. Usually, they'll ally Adoyev, so make sure to send some men there to deal with them as quickly as possible. In this war with Tver, you're going to want to humiliate them and take two of their provinces. Leaving one province behind serves two functions. Firstly, in my experience, it entices Muscovy to attack Tver instead of you first, and secondly, it enables you to humiliate your rival, which is crucial for power projection. So following on from this, you're going to want to issue an embargo to all of your rivals, as well as insulting one of them. This all should take you over 50 power projection, which grants you an extra plus one in all monarch categories, again crucial for getting to Miltek 4 early. Then, moth war your forts and reduce your army and fleet maintenance to zero. It might be worth attempting to sell your heavies to maritime nations such as Lubeck, though if you're not able to, simply delete them as you're not going to be using them, and they're quite costly. At this point you should be creating a spy network in Muscovy, as well as looking for other allies. Nations such as Ryazan are quite good to ally, as they have a tendency to also ally Muscovy. If you ally them first, they're less likely to do so. Fortunately, due to Muscovy being over its relations limit, as it has so many vassals, it typically doesn't get too many allies. When you get Miltek 4, you're going to want to call in the Great Horde and declare war on Muscovy. My personal preference is declaring war for Moscow itself, as it's a fort, meaning that once you take it, it's rather difficult for them to snipe. As well as being the capital, so two birds and one stone, you get extra war score. As a side note, there will likely be an election in your nation. If you've made your ruler into a general and they have quite good stats, then keep him. Otherwise, select the military candidate and turn him into a general to attempt to try and get better pips, also to get a larger monthly increase in your military power. You need to do one final thing before engaging the Muscovites. You should consecrate two metropolitans, one in your capital and one in the state containing Neva. Neva needs to be developed until the entire state collectively has at least 30 development, which should enable you to consecrate there. Doing these two will give you 10% patriarch authority which can be traded in for an icon that gives you plus 5% discipline. If you're slightly newer to the game, I would advise hiring mercenaries. You'll definitely need them later on, so all you're doing is saving money, which, if you're fighting for the survival of your nation, really isn't that important. I would advise at the start of the war to focus on sieging down Moscow and Mozaisk. Please do correct my pronunciation in the comments. Taking these two forts sets you up really well for the war. From here, you need to look for stat wipes on Muscovy, as they will likely be getting Miltek 4 soon, so you need to use your superior troops whilst you can. Fortunately, Muscovy has a tendency to leave troops lying around, as well as the vassal stacks being small enough that you'd be able to stack wipe them. If Muscovy is busy with the Great Horde, as this is their main asset to you, typically Muscovy will head south first and attempt to siege down Saratov, meaning the Great Horde expends all its resources defending its land, weakening Muscovy for you. In any case, if they do become distracted, attempt to siege down Peskov. You need to remember that if you are able to stack wipe a vassal army, and you've seized down their homeland, they are unable to create more troops. For example, if you siege down both of Peskov's provinces and then stack wipe their three to 4,000 troops, you completely remove these from the war. This can sometimes be the difference between winning and losing this war, as the elimination of a completely separate manpower pool can tip the balance. It is at this midpoint during the war that you'll likely need to hire mercenaries. Do not let yourself become weaker and weaker as your enemy will have more manpower than you. I would say the second you start to dip below 10K troops, hire mercenaries. In order to fully win this war and get what you need out of it, you're going to need to siege down Perm. Fortunately, this is just a capital fort, so it shouldn't take long. Though its geographical location of being in the Far East means you do need to pick your timing to go there. In my opinion, once you've dealt a significant blow to the Muscovite armies, you should instantly run and try and siege down the fort. The defensiveness edict should be placed in your provinces if the war is a bit too evenly matched. This will also buy you time to go and siege down the fort in the East. In this piece, you're going to want to take back your cores, the Moscow area, and Rostov, as well as money. The Great Horde sometimes pieces out separately, as they will likely have their capital siege down, but if not, then just don't give them anything. 
Once you've won the war, you need to sit back, deal with your rebels and pay off your loans. This lines up really nicely because you're also waiting for Danzig to declare independence, which should happen in the next few years. When this happens, wait until the Teutonic Order will not aid the Livonian Order and attack them. This should be an incredibly easy war and also be a nice way to pay off your loans if you still have them. You should take the Estonian and Livonian areas, which include both the Raval Fort and the Letgarland Fort, as well as the aforementioned money. Then build your force limits and wait for the truce with Muscovy to end. This will be around 1470. This should be a much easier war than the first one as Muscovy has a tendency to attack eastwards, further weakening them. Out of this war, you're going to want to take as many provinces as possible, as well as provinces bordering the Eastern Hordes such as Kazan and the Great Horde. I would also advise at this point breaking your alliance with Ryazan and attacking them. So this should put you in a really nice spot for future expansion. Looking to the future, you should be attempting to expand east and southeast, both into the Great Horde and Hordes to the east. Do bear in mind that you can also attack Scandinavia depending on who they've allied. Additionally, bear in mind that they have a tendency to attack you, though this can sometimes be a blessing in disguise, as they will likely not be able to call any allies to this war, and you should be able to easily beat them. It is up to you if you want to support Swedish independence, though I personally wouldn't. Poland also has a tendency to build a coalition against them early in this game. If that happens, make sure to take full advantage by attacking into Lithuania, especially if the union didn't take place. At Admin Tech 10, you should be able to form Russia really easily. And looking to the future, the ideas I'd recommend would be a military idea first, owing to the excess of mill points you'll likely experience in the early years, with either admin or religious ideas following. My personal preference is for admin ideas, as you're going to be coring large swathes of land. You might also want to switch your government type in order to upgrade to a kingdom, as you might suffer from being over governing capacity otherwise. Thank you guys for watching. Do check out my Riga guide, which similarly takes advantage of an overzealous Poland. And please do subscribe if you like these sorts of videos. Goodbye.